Good morning. So over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, very good morning to everyone. Um, I think like all of you are uh, part of this training and you are enjoying this training for last four days. We know that uh, when we are having this continuous online training, by the end of fifth day, most of you become very uh, uh, inactive because it's very monotonous like that. But we, uh, we, uh, we have seen that is always exceptional for XRG training because SRGs have been always highly motivated and they have given very good response during our last two online SRG training also. So we are expecting the same from this group. Nice to see all of you online here. Uh, one small request from my side is like when we are having an online interaction, I see everyone's almost all, all your cameras are switched off. So continuously everyone switching off your camera will not enable interaction. So I request if possible, whoever is possible to open your camera, it will be good to open so that it helps us also to see you and uh, have at least know that these are the people attending the training. Thank you so much. If you have any uh, severe internet uh, connectivity issue that you can't open the video that will stop you from listening, then it's fine. Thanks a lot. Such a good response from the participants. That is what always SRG does with us. That's a great thing. Thank you so much. Uh, so some of you, I could see the faces now and I can recognize some of you have already attended SRG training and you are attending again. So it's a little tough for me because now I have to um, differentiate the content so that you don't get bored. I'll ensure that there will be something new. You will uh, take it from today's session on technopedagogy integration. Though some of the things are going to be the same, which you must have uh, listened in the previous sessions uh, in some other particular programs as well. But that's to re-insist again, because you will be becoming a trainer. State resource persons are not trained to just develop content. We are training you that you will become a master trainer in your state and you will ensure that all your state people have the capacity to develop the content. So that's a kind of leadership that's expected from all of you. Uh, so we wanted to understand that we all have a common understanding when we go and talk about this. So two things I want to tell you. If you are not able to follow anything in between, put a chat box message because in between keep on questioning would disturb the flow. So, but we don't want you to stop your questioning. When and where you get a question, keep putting in the chat box. So I'll be uh, parallelly checking the chat box and if I could integrate those questions immediately into the session, I'll be doing that. Otherwise at the end, I will surely address the questions, okay? So everyone, I request uh, all of you to be with the session um, so that we will be able to really learn something out of it. And uh, also whenever there is an activity, please participate. Otherwise, it will give a wrong impression that all of you are just switched on, join the Zoom, but not participating, okay? Okay, so to start the session, I'll share my screen. Is my screen visible? Can any one of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So uh, if you see, we are going to uh, talk about technology integration and teaching learning assessment. So some of the points are uh, why this particular session in e-content development training. That's the first question we need to understand because e-content development is not uh, um, it's not an isolated activity. Only when you are planning an ICT integrator or we can, uh, uh, in a broader sense, when you are planning only a technology integrated teaching learning session, the demand for e-content comes in. Nowadays, what we are doing is just for the sake of certain reasons. For example, there is a Diksha portal. So just to fill the content there, we are developing digital content. Sometimes it's a force on us that we are getting some fund. We need to show that this many e-content has been developed. So sometimes we are developing digital content. But that is not the real purpose of developing digital content. 
why we are developing digital content is these digital content should be helpful for any teacher or an educator to integrate technology into the teaching learning and assessment process that is why we are developing digital content so it is very important to understand first about the integration of technology so that we will be able to identify exactly when where why how we will develop our digital content and there are certain concerns we will need to uh, take it into our practice as well so this is more or like a consolidation session also of whatever you have learned from day 1 till date so whatever you have learned on all these dates this will look like a consolidation so you have learned everything in bits and pieces on last four days try to consolidate and make sense out of it okay so when we start what are the points we are going to discuss is like uh, we are just going to discuss the terminology icts that is only to make sure that it's not that you don't know but it is to make sure that we are all having a common understanding so whenever i use this word in the whole presentation we all have a common understanding and so that in that sense we will be going forward and we also need to differentiate what is ict and technology and its relationship as well uh, somebody mic is on so can i request them to just keep yourself on mute please yeah because there is a buzzing sound which is getting Uh, disturbing sound. Yeah, admin can please take care of it. So we also need to understand why we need to really integrate technology, right? And uh, also, how do we do this? And there are certain safety aspects when you are even trying to develop a content, which we need to take care of. This is what we are going to discuss in a few points. So I request all of you to uh, you must be most of you may be attending in your laptop the session. if you are having your mobile or if you are using a mobile whichever is comfortable i request you to use this screen and participate in this activity if you are i'm just also i'll put the link as well in the chat box it will be easy for you to uh, uh, scroll it if you are not uh, having a link since all of you are there the link would be easier i think so i'll put the link in the chat box so click on this link the link i have put in the chat box so you will be getting a question which says what does ict stand for this is a very basic question just click on your correct answer so let us see um 34 people have participated we have 129 participants let's see we'll take a second like another few seconds so that like everyone could participate very good 60 have participated that's good at least 50 percentage of the participant are active in the session we hope all the 100 percentage we get the participation 69 Seventy-nine, eighty-one. Very good. So let's give some more time to see at least whether it increases to hundred. Eighty-four. Eighty-five. 
this cell. Okay. Uh, so still others are doing, we can even continue because 89 and 90 is also a very good number of participation. Thanks for your cooperation. And uh, we can see here, almost 69 people have given your right answer. ICT stand for information and communication technology. Some of you have missed it, but uh, it is for our understanding. Whenever we ask what is ICT, this answer is very correct from all of us. We tell very clearly that it is information and communication technology. But many times when we ask, can you explain it to a person who doesn't understand what te any technical term, what does it mean? This is just a full form. What does it mean? Many times we fail to explain what is information and communication technology. So there are two parts in this. We can see information technology and communication technology. So there are two terminologies. So if you say technology as an overall, there are multiple technologies. There can be print technology, there can be other technologies also. So technology, when you say integration of technology, pedagogy integration, it is not about only information and communication technology. It could be broader than that. So when, whenever we want to narrow down to ICT, what does it mean is we are using the information and communication technology in teaching, learning, and assessment process. What does that mean? Whenever you are able to create a digital information, you are able to store it as a digital information, retrieve it as a digital information, manipulate it, send it, and receive it as a digital information. Then only we can claim that we are using ICT. So for example, all of us know that our textbooks are QR coded, right? Everyone knows our school textbooks are QR coded. Yeah. So just by putting a QR code, can we say that we have made our book, our books are all an ICT resource? Can we tell that? No. Why? Very good uh, answer. It's no. Why? Because when we have put a QR code, it's all in the printed form. Maybe the book is in the hard copy. We have put a print QR code in that. But what we have done, when you scan the QR code, there is a digital uh, resource which is playing behind, right? So in that case, we have created digital resource. We are able to store the digital resource. We are able to scan, retrieve. Anytime you scan, you are able to retrieve the digital resource. Even if you want somewhere like, no, if the uh, school, uh, if the state feels today, I have put a content tomorrow, I don't like it. I want to remove that video and replace it with the video. You can even manipulate it, modify it rather. Okay. So these four part, which are all features of information technology is done when we make QR code in the uh, book and embedding the digital resource into the QR code. So our textbooks, which are QR coded, yeah, I'll be sharing the uh, digital, um, uh, I'll be sharing the presentations. So whenever we want it, whenever we are putting the QR code in the textbook, because that is also a digital content we are developing, okay? When we are placing a QR code in the book, it is also a digital content. So even if you take a A4 sheet, you just put that, this is the activity and you put a QR code that is also a digital content only. So we include that because there is a physical paper and there an embedded uh, digital content is there. We call it as digital content, not a digital content. We call it as digital content. I'm just putting the spelling on that. We call it as physic, phys 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 because physical plus digital. So all our QR coded books are not just purely a digital content, but it is a digital resource, a physical book where digital contents are embedded with the form of QR code. But in this case, only we have used information technology. Only when, now when you have uploaded, when you have, when you are playing the digital content from Diksha portal, Maybe I can embed the content from any portal, right? So maybe I can keep this content from YouTube and put it in the QR, YouTube, in the QR code. I can keep the content in uh, Diksha and put it into the QR code. So what happens if you keep in such portal is 
then you also get a data how many people watched your video right whenever a person is scanning your resource automatically he is sending a information to diksha or to youtube portal that the person is accessing right and the portal is reverting back to them that you are able to do it so that is where where the communication happens communication is not only between two people even the system communicates but you just think of a case where you have put your uh, digital video in your drive google drive and you have just put it into the qr code will you get that information whether somebody has accessed it or not do we get an information we don't get such information when the resource is not in a portal where analytics is involved so in that case the book becomes only a technology resource not an ict resource it only has the information component but not the communication component so we need to be very clear when we are saying i'm creating a e content e content just can use some technology and you can create but the e content becomes e content is electronic content so it can have two parts one is you create it as only as an information resource in a digital form but if you really want it it to be an ict resource then you should ensure your digital content is made available in a place where there is possibility of this kind of analytics there is a possibility of communication so only when you complete all this process you can call yourself that you have made an ict resource many times what we uh, what we do is we create or we only do this level we make a powerpoint presentation and we use it in our class and we speak but in that case only we have done this for but whenever you send that powerpoint presentation in mail or in whatsapp or you put it on a slide share you share it in the portal like diksha or any oer portal only then this cycle gets complete then only we can call it as ict resource okay so let me stop here is there any question till is there any question till can you just type your question in the chat box if you have any questions okay so there are no questions so we can proceed further if you have still a question you can still put it we can address it right okay so let's move on to the next part of our discussion of why do we need it why do we need it? so whenever we are preparing a digital content there are many benefits right Not many of us agree that digital content has lot of benefits but i wanted to take all your attention to few major points which we need to ensure that when you all prepare a digital content or when you train others to prepare a digital content these things has to be part of it when we are preparing it otherwise we can simply teach in the way we are teaching we are ensuring we are in integrating technology into our teaching learning process to make something different to make something better so these are some of the points that can help us so number one is visualization i know that there are there was a subject specific uh, session yesterday so you must have gone through all this but i'm just repeating uh, once again a few example so that all of us can have a common understanding of this so i'm just trying to uh, uh, show about a uh, geogebra Uh, this is a software max teachers uh, must have got exposed yesterday but the thing is like it's a, it's not just for mathematics alone you can also use this for other subject but i'll just wanted to show you uh, something which we call it about uh, visualization you can see this is a template a very simple statement which all of us have learned in our class in lower class right at least we all must have learned this in our class 7 or 8 in our school so if you have seen this most of the teachers would have taught this as a statement which we would have memorized just recall your school days we most of us just would have learned this 
this as a statement. We memorized it and we applied it while solving problems. Some good teachers would have told you to cut a triangle from paper, then tell them some teachers would have drawn a triangle like this on the board. They would have then taken a pro, uh, would then pro, project a protractor and then measured angles, then write like this on the board, find the sum, and then we, they would have done this all on the blackboard. That is also one way of teaching. The third way is a teacher could have told all the 45 students in the classroom to take a paper, cut your own triangle, measure your own angles, find your own sum, and then ask all the 45 students or 50 students to share their answer and then tell that any triangle you take, this is true. But what happens is this is a generalization, which we say for any triangle. But the children always have a doubt. Children always have a doubt that only we have tested for 45, which is a very small number. Can we say that it will be any triangle? So the children cannot visualize that any triangle. That's at a seventh standard level. There are many more things in max they don't visualize, but this is to start, okay? So in that case, the kind of technology help we can take is like I'm, 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 I'm having an applet before me, I'm having a screen before me, which looks similar to what a teacher can do it on a board, right? But now you can see which a teacher could not do it on a board is uh, every second I can change the triangle. So how many triangles I'm trying to prove that it is 180 degree only is something which you can understand when you are keep on changing. Even if you take one minute to change, you can show thousands of triangle which a child can understand. You change anywhere. I have just turned it to almost all the degree. So I'm saying like almost I'm trying to change all the 36, 360 degree angle. I'm trying all the possible triangles, right? You can even give an exposure. A teacher can show this, but if there is possible system, every child can tell to explore this. So one single child would have done this way, some thousand triangle, another child would have done thousand. So this is a kind of experience a child can get to visualize for any triangle. It's a very small word, but it plays a very important role when the child builds the concepts later based on this particular. We all know that mathematics teachers all, all know that uh, this trigonometric property, this particular mathematic pro property, like no, is very important for trigonometry later. It is very important for everything later, right? So many times projectile you learn, you use this. You learn anything you learn, this. use this. So it's very important to build this as a very strong fact. So this is one thing which we can see that it will help. This will help for visualization. Similarly, like um, uh, I have my own experience of this, which I would like to share is I am an MSc mathematics candidate. After completing my MSc and MED, I went for my first interview for my job. The only question uh, which was asked in the uh, interview is, what is pi? When this question was asked, I explained them. Pi is a, a ratio, which is 3.14, 3 22 by 7. Then they said again, ask the question, what is pi again? So this question was repeated to me four times. And four times I gave all possible answers I know with my experience of learning till mathematics, MSc mathematics. Fifth time when the interviewer asked me what is pi, I told sir, this is what I know till whatever I study till MSc, I don't know the answer. What you are expecting. Then he said, you are appointed. So I said, this is a good company that gives appointment to people who don't know the answer. So, but then he explained, no, as a maths teacher, when you have not even visualized in your life, up, even till MSc, you have not visualized what is pi. It, it really is painful for you to send you into the school system. So better you learn here and then. So we can question ourselves as max teachers. There are many max teachers here. You question yourself. How many of us are visualizing the concepts which is possible? I'm not saying every concept is possible to be visualized. There are things which is completely abstract. You cannot. But if there is a possibility to visualize, have we visualized? Have you given an opportunity? 
teachers wants to give an opportunity but unfortunately there is no system to provide sometime we are forced to complete the syllabus so no time to give experience sometimes we don't have resources in our school we have wanted to really give students experience of doing experiments and learning but we don't have access to uh, computer labs or we don't have an access to physical science labs so that is where this technology comes in as a aid to help you to visualize which is not possible to be visualized otherwise so when if you are sometime visiting delhi you should also visit our experiential lab which helps you to um, help you to visualize uh, certain things which is not possible in a normal class so what i would re request everyone is take your mobile and install the app called sky view light so we will do that experience little later but parallelly please give it for downloading so that uh, we don't miss our time i'm just typing there are two apps i'm writing so these two apps you need to uh, download in your mobile and have an experience at least uh, during a break or so so i will be showing now google art and culture in the browser mode but it really gives an experience only when you install in your mobile and uh, do it with your mobile so i'm just showing you uh, this good google art and culture how it helps in visualization these are some of the examples i'm showing but this is not the example but uh, these are some of the examples you can have a list of thing uh, tools like this which you can use it so many of us would have not gone to ajanta and elora physically to see so i have not gone so i don't even know how ajanta is okay so i'm just going to see whether i can have a sense of how the caves look like okay because for me cave means it's just a mountain because many students have this uh, like a, it's like a, just a rock cave is just a rock for me. what does ajanta cave has great about it we sometimes show pictures like this in our books but can a child really visualize it with a picture so let us see some other example how visualization helps so i am now going to go to cave number 6 okay so i have now gone to cave number 6 i am saying this is what a picture can show cave number 6 has a buddha statue but i want to give an experience whether this buddha statue is really in the middle of the cave or on the side of the cave or on the left or right side or which which part of the cave so what this particular thing gives us it can help you to visualize by having the exploring this whole cave you can see that there is an entrance so coming through the entrance there are lots of pillars but after crossing all the pillars there is a kind of a boundary which has been kept beyond which you cannot enter inside that is the buddha cave so you can see this is how and there are sites there are some rooms also there you can see at the top there is no great architecture because it's like there is no great designs it's a plain um tear ceiling okay but i can see there are different um, uh pillars in this so let me see whether uh, this is same in cave number 1 cave number 1 also has a buddha statue but you can see here the pillars are positioned we are entering indirectly sides have pillars and directly you are entering into the buddha and when you see the top you can see kind of a ceiling when you use a technology like this which is a 360 degree video this helps a child to visualize how this program this how this ajanta caves really look like and also it's not just like this if you have really a mobile and a vr set they can also have a virtual experience of visiting this ajanta cave so there is also an option in this particular software where you have a complete virtual tour of ajanta cave so there are tools like this that can help us to really ensure children are able to visualize what they are learning this is number one benefit of integrating technology into our teaching learning process number two is engaging so let me ask the question to all of you you are all now in online 
how many of you feel so happy to be in online session? Very engaged sessions. Every day I had an engaged, I could see a smile immediately in many people's face. No answer, but the smile talks a lot, right? Even we don't like to be, though we talk so much of technology, if you tell me to attend continuously four meetings in online, I'll say my head is aching, my ears are paining. All that kind of complaint starts coming, right? And most of the online sessions, the moment technology comes in, we feel that, yeah, yeah, it's hectic. Some extent, I am very happy. There are exceptional cases as well. Sometimes that's a new experience. But you can see that many times we lose ourselves. We forget our potential. We forget our resource in the name of technology. That is one main concern every resource person and teachers have to take care when you really use technology in your classroom. Don't believe that technology can do everything. Technology can do only something if the teacher has planned it properly. By technology itself, nothing can be done meaningfully. Something will happen. For example, six months old child. Nowadays, mothers are very happy and easiest ways to feed a baby is give the mobile phone in the child's hand with some cartoon playing in YouTube. Do you all agree with that? You can observe most of the parents. Most of the parents are doing. I'm not saying that's right, but we can see most of that. That's a tragic truth, but most of the parents are doing this. And not only that, we are very happy. My child, six month old, she is, but she's technically so sound, which I can't do. We are very proud. But you please check it. How many times we have experienced, now what is happening is the children have, we all know by Piaget's theory of learning, children will observe and imitate at that age. So when we are keeping the mobile phone before them and we keep moving, they also learn how to move the videos. Now children don't want to watch full videos, they want to watch shorts. They want to watch only the shots which are uploaded in YouTube. What does shots do? Every short seconds. In seconds, there is a video. So the children keep moving. But what happens? You just think about your own experience. I have a lot of experience of moving the shots. In between, there will be indecent con content appearing. You don't have control. You cannot understand when an adult content will appear. Though you are not searching for an adult content. We don't want to see a pornography, but we are only seeing educational content. We are listening to an educationist who have spoken as a short. You are keep on moving to just listen to education content, maybe a good entertainment content. But without your control, there is a pornographic content at coming in without your understanding. Sometimes if you are before people, you get really uh, don't know how to handle it. So you can think about it. You are giving a phone to a child at that age and we are very happy about the skill the child has learned to move, swipe. The, the, we are happy about the skill the child has understood to click. You are, we are happy about the skill the child has learned how to search the cartoon the child wants to watch. This is a very good skill set. They have learned something, but is it a good thing to learn? So whenever there is a technology at several levels, we really need to have a guided learning. Until and otherwise, ICT integration is guided properly by the teacher or by the educator. Even if you give a digital content, there should be a guidance on how to use it. Otherwise, at the end, we will not have a meaningful learning. Right? So how a technology can engage? For example, if I am talking next one and a half hours, just showing a presentation, you will not see my face. I'll switch off my video and just show a presentation. I keep talking. My voice is not so sweet so that you can keep hearing. 
you will get a monotony after some time. So there is a need to give a break so that I keep can keep you engaged. So when I told you, all of you just give your response. What I could see is, I could see still in my uh, thing, even though I stopped, 98 people have answered the question. So 98 people are engaged in this session. So it is not that like technology does not help you to engage, but it is the way a teacher decides to use the technology that will make the engage. If we just create a e-content as a video and just give to the student you watch, then there is no engagement. But what we need to do is, we need to use that video. Where I should stop the video and question? Where I should give a pass for children to think? Whenever you are preparing the digital content in your video itself, there should be a Sorry, I think I lost. I have lost the connectivity in between. Um, so that is one point which we need to keep in mind. Until and otherwise we plan the integration properly, we cannot really engage. But technology can help in engagement. The way even when you are taking an online session, use of tools like this. I have used a software called uh, Mentimeter. It's a web-based tool which you can have activities like this. Not like this. There are many other things which you can use uh, during your session like this. So which will help. Uh, you to really uh, engage the participants during your online session as well, okay? So moving ahead, the third point is the collaboration. So we are just going to see an example for that, like, no, so uh, how collaboration is possible in technology. So I'm just going to use again the same Mentimeter only. So you have learned a lot of um, content, like you have learned a lot of things in the last uh, few days. So what I'm just going to do is, this is my previous activity, which I have uh, conducted. So I'm just resetting the result. Right. So what all of you are going to do is, I'm just going to put again a link in the chat box. You will click, click on this. So you can click on this and give your answer. Share any three. There will be three box. In the three box, you only write three FOSS tools. Share any three FOSS tool which can be used for teaching learning. Just enter three software names. That can be a free and open source software which can be used. So whatever you know, just type and just submit. So when you click on this link, you should only type. In this particular, you should not write in your chat box the answer. You will, when you click on the link, you will get this. Just type. Type your answer one, one first software, second software, third software, submit. That's all you need to do. Okay. Yeah. Already three people have submitted. Okay. Let us see. Nine. So I'll give you one minute of time. 
So those who have submitted, keep observing the screen, what's happening. Very good, 40 participants have finished their answers. Seventy six. So out of one forty eight participants, only seventy six participants are active. So others, by the time others are uh, answering it. So what is happening now? You can see in the last one minute. A, around now 80, it's still increasing, around 80 people collaboratively had prepared a mind, mind map, like a word wall, right? We have prepared a, a complete, um, a good resource. Otherwise, with which a graphic person takes a lot of time to do this. But if you see in one minute, now 83 people have contributed and then uh, you have uh, filled the responses. So this is a kind of collaboration. We can take help from technology. These are all some small examples I'm giving, but this is the way we can do a collaboration, right? So even in a classroom physical training, we cannot make so many people to really talk to each other, share their understanding with each other. But here are two ways. One is like all of you have collaboratively prepared this word wall, okay? And second thing is, I also got all the analytics done, which, which has simplified my work. So out of 86 people who have answered, what I could found is most of the people responded Adocity, H5P, Canva as open source, right? Most of the people have answered. That's why it's in large fonts. But there is a misunderstanding, which is also observed here is, Adocity is an open source, H5P is an open source, Canva is not an open source. So it's, it has given me an immediate observation to interact back with. Not only collaboration, it has given an opportunity to understand where is the understanding of the participants. So some of you have written Lumi, VUE, Jojibra, all these are good. Some of you have written Kahoot. Kahoot is not an open source. Some of you have written, um, there was another stop motion. Stop motion is not an open. Stop motion is a kind category of animation. But the app which you use, Stop Motion Studio, is not an open source. Google Apps, not an open source. So there is a misunderstanding in us. We are still not clear with what does open source mean and the examples of open source. So immediately within a minute, I could understand there is still misunderstanding in the participants. There is a need to clear this misunderstanding. So it, technology not only helps you to collaborate, it also simplifies and helps you to make use of the time for other observations. Otherwise, what happens is to collect this information itself, it takes a long time. But now since the collection of information and analytics was faster, I'm able to understand what is where gap is there. So this can help me to inter intervene, make my interaction better in my classroom. Similar way in our classrooms also, every software we use can help you to make these observations, right? So this is one of the benefit of uh, um, technology, why we have to integrate. And the other is the use of multimedia. 
Multimedia is like any technology you use, it gives scope for whatever way, way you want. Like for example, if you have different kinds of learners, we know very well there are children with different learning styles. So multi this technology helps you for a child who is auditory, he can just listen and learn. For a person who is visual, the person can watch and learn. In one video, you can have both the things also. But I also wanted to bring an important point, which is in the next one, but I wanted to bring uh, this point into the scene for discussion, which is called as embodied learning. What is embodied learning? Whenever we are using technology, it will become beneficial only when we apply this concept uh, theory into the learning process. This is not, this is only a coined newly, a new coined term, but this is there from our Gurukula period. It is nothing new. Concept is old, but it has been announced now with a new name and theory, that's all. So, but it is very, very relevant. Why it is announced, coined, named and announced now is because of the intervention of technology. Earlier, without technology, we were talking on this. But the moment technology came in, we forgot that. So what is that we forget is whenever we are integrating, we forget the physical part. So that is where it always tells that whenever we are using technology also, we need to bring in that physical part into it. So some of the examples I would like to show, right? So some of the examples I have put for embodied learning, even when you use robotics, embodied, embodied learning can be done. So in simple words, what is embodied learning is even when you use technology, you should ensure that the participants or the learners physically gets involved so that the physical movement development doesn't get stopped. So when you are going to create a digital content, we need to keep ensure that the way to use this digital content has to be described in a way that there will be a physical part in it. So for example, I have some videos here, which are not my videos. I've taken it from the open source. So these are some of the examples you can see how uh, embodied. So I'm just going to not show, there's no audio. I'm just going to show you how, see, how this is getting integrated. You can see a child of, we all know that we are now crazy about bringing all this technology into India. Robotics people are happy. But what we are teaching robotics is more of just creating a robot. In many schools, in the name of STEM education, they tell them to create a robot. But when we say embodied learning, when we also say that to make it more meaningful, this is basically a play. But to play, they are making the robotic. And then again, they play with a robo, 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 robots in the normal uh, physical class. I'm sorry, I think somewhere I clicked wrongly. Okay. I'm extremely sorry for that. Okay, I'm just scrolling it little and showing you so that it's easy for us to learn. So we, whenever we are integrating technology, we should ensure that there is a physical part which we need not, we should not forget, okay? So this is one example uh, where the children are doing robotics and they are still playing. You can see the robots are done, but they are physically involved, physically involved. That's what now being emphasized. In technology use, integrating technology should ensure physical involvement, otherwise, it will not really help in the child's development. So this is in terms of an example with, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an example with robotics, but we'll just go and see another example. This is an example with interactive activity. All of you have learned H5P to create an interactive uh, activity, but there are technologies which you helps you to make the interaction like this also. You develop the interaction in the software, but you play it on the physical mode. Can you see this? This is what is created like the way we have created using H5P. This is one another software called Matica. So the, the, that is projected on the uh, floor. Usually what we do, we project it on a board and then tell the children to click on the board. But it is just an ulta. You project the thing on this, uh, in the floor and tell them to just click on that. 
the white board is on the floor. The interaction is happening on the floor. So you can see how physically they are making the children to do the activity. So this is how uh, the physical activity can be still embedded into the use of technology. So I'll also show you some VR example. This is little and elder one. So sometimes in India, what we start doing, even because now we are observing in our labs also, when we have the experiential lab, there is a virtual reality kit. The more, first thing what we do is we directly make them to sit and start putting the kit and then start exploring virtually. But it is not to be done like that. So first of all, before doing it, there should be a physical involvement in learning what it is. And now virtual reality is not to sit and uh, do it. They have to walk around. They have to see. They have to have the physical way of moving. So we need to plan the class in that way. Then only it will be a very important thing. The last example is a game. A digital game, how a physical involvement could be made in a digital game. So this is something which is coming up. Samsung has, uh, is one of the leading company who is coming up with such products. There are many schools who are doing it now. Uh, in India also, we have started doing it. But the only thing is, um, we may need a lot of kit. So you can see here, it is having a sensor. And uh, it doesn't mean that you need to buy. Earlier example, you saw there is a big wall screen where that complete interaction is happening. But in this, it's only a sensor kit. Can you see there is a small kit here? Where a child just moves the hand, then it shows how the blood circulation happens when you move your fingers. So this is one of the example. These are some of the examples in which technology can be involved, uh, used, um, like made use very effectively with the help of physical involvement. So only when we do that, this multimedia usage becomes meaningful. The last benefit is how it helps in a better data management. We all know that even I showed the example of uh, the way the word uh, mind map, the word cloud was being built, where all of your data was coming, there was uh, 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 the, the text was larger and smaller, which helped us to understand. Okay, so these are some of the benefits when we integrate technology in our teaching learning process, but until and otherwise, we really do this, it will not really help. Until and otherwise we plan it, it will not help. So before we go to the next part, I just want all of you to close your eyes. Some of you seriously looking into the system. So leave all your systems, close your eyes. So keep imagining whatever I'm going to tell you now. Imagine yourself, you're sitting inside a flight. You're sitting inside a flight. The flight is at its complete height. You're sitting near to the window seat. And you're looking through the windows. You can only see completely snow. All these days you have been in a place where you have never seen a snow. This is the first time you have seen snow. It looks so beautiful. It's just like cotton for you. Cotton spread over complete mountains. but it is snow. You are trying to differentiate the cotton and the snow. You are so excited seeing snow. The flight is slowly coming down now. The flight is slowly coming down now. And when the flight is coming down, you are coming closer to the mountain. You are able to see the snow in a closer view. Suddenly, the flight starts moving faster. You can see that you are landing. When you landed, you see only the 
airport path is ha not having snow, but you're completely surrounded by snow. You go down there, you got out of your flight, you started moving out, you stepped out of the airport. When you moved out, there is a snowfall. The snow is like thermocol balls, which is falling on you. It is not heavy. It's so light, so creamy. It's just falling from your top, from your head. It's falling on your jackets. You're touching it. It's so, it's, you can't feel it. You can't say that it is cold. You're trying to touch it and feel it. The moment you touch it, it starts melting. So you're just standing there and trying to take a pic of yourself. Then you see the picture doesn't give that feel. So then you start doing a recording of your own video, which you would like to carry back and show. Can we all open our eyes? This is a kind of a short exercise in between the online sessions to give rest to your eyes. Okay, this is not to, for imagination, but just to give a break for your eyes because you are watching the screen for already past one hour. More than one hour staring at a screen is not good for your eyes. So whenever we are using such technology in our classroom, we need to think about ways of engaging the people like this to relax. I've just told how to do it with eyes now, but we also need to do for physically. Like we are sitting now for almost an hour, right? So you keep sitting like this. At the end of five days, you need to meet your doctor. Rather than that, even somebody is telling you or not, after at least an hour, one hour is the maximum time you can sit, sit still. At least after one hour, what you need to do is because already your camera is on. So we are watching you. Still, you need to relax yourself. So the very simplest way is just hold your chair and move your legs up and down, which cannot be seen in the camera. But... Until and otherwise you do this, you will get a severe nerve issue if you're sitting like this. So what we need to do is like whenever we are integrating technology, we need to take care of the children, physical and mental health as well. Technology doesn't say that technology is what everything that will give a wrong impression to the children. So this is one thing which we need to take care. So let's go ahead of uh, there's some important concerns which we need to take care when we integrate technology. So let's move on. How do we? This is something which I use it as a common slide for many presentation, but only the context of explanation is different. Uh, whenever we are going to integrate technology in teaching learning process, there if there is some kind of a path, it will help us to do a better way. Instead of taking when and what comes, it's better to follow a step-by-step -step process so that it helps us to do it in a better way. So for that, this ADI model helps. ADI is one of the instructional designing uh, model, which is a very simple and world um, accepted model that is implement, uh, in, like that's applied for developing digital content, developing online course or preparing your ICT integrator. Do anything, this will help. Not only doing, even if you prepare your tea at your home, even if you're cooking at home, this is what we do. This is the five steps we apply. Okay. So when we are thinking of integrating technology into teaching, learning and assessment, these are four important points that we need to keep in mind. Number one, what is the purpose? If there is no purpose, let us not really use technology. Don't create digital content if there is no purpose for it. So for example, if I'm going to teach a content, New Delhi is the capital of, New Delhi is the capital of Delhi. Sorry, New Delhi is the capital of India. You want to only teach this one line. Do you need to really create a digital content? 
there is no need. Usually this line can be written on the board or just the teacher can tell, right? So that's a very simple thing. There is no need. But when there will be a need even to create this one line to be written on the board, for example, teacher can simply tell. But sometimes teacher writes this on the board. When we will write? When we know the children do not know the spelling of new daily. The children do not know the word capital. So after writing this, I want to explain each and everything. Then what a teacher can do is write it on the board, right? But if your class size is 50, writing on the board may not really help the last child to visualize. Then in that context where you have the class size to be more, it is better to type this sentence in a PowerPoint slide and then show it on the screen. There, the need for digital content comes in just because your class size is more, right? So there the purpose comes in. So the purpose may be sometime depending on the context. Context is the learner or a teacher also. So for example, I am a teacher, my handwriting is not good. I want to write on the board New Delhi is capital of India, but I am sure the way I write it, it will not really reach to a student. In that case, I can better prepare it a slide and then show it on a screen. So sometimes a competency lack in a teacher can be supplemented or complemented by a technology. So even in that kind of a context, we can prepare digital content. Many of us know certain concepts are there in our book, which many new teachers do not. A new content has been added in a textbook, right? If suddenly a new content is coming now, for example, in CBSE schools, they have introduced coding. Because NEP says coding, they have introduced coding. But none of the computer science teachers in the school know what to teach with that because the software is new. So what is the need? Like the content is new. Even if it is a single line, the teacher itself do not know in that case, it is better to create a digital content and give them. This is the context, right? Based on your context, there may be a purpose. Second thing, second example, let us take. If I want to teach that, Delhi is surrounded by these states. It is surrounded by Haryana, UP, Chandigarh. I want to tell that to the children. In that case, what we will do? What kind of, do we need a digital content? Like most of you are some. Most of the participants are from some. Many of your children would not even know where is them. Because I have seen one of the uh, diet faculty when we went for Nishta training, one diet faculty told he has come, he is from Odisha, he is a diet faculty, he has come to Bhuvaneshwar, his age is 53, and he told us at the age of 50, sorry, uh, 43, he told us at the age of 43, this is the first time he has traveled in train and he has come to Bhuvaneshwar, being a diet faculty. So there are people who have never ever got an exposure of knowing anything. Just in our social science and history, many times we teach things, imagining that children will understand. I am a good example for that. I never like to study social science in my school because I cannot see, because my teacher never brought a map to my school. She never showed an atlas in my class. So till class nine, I never liked social science because they will say that these are the countries, these are the states. I never knew how many states are there in the India till 20, class 10, nine. In class 10, when I was there, there was an um, exam, like a general knowledge exam. When they taught me civics at that time, I never understood what they are talking about parliament, legislation, nothing I understood. That's how my social teacher te taught me, very bad class. But when I was in class 10, there was an exam for us where like a general knowledge exam. The question was chief minister of Tamil Nadu. I belong to Tamil Nadu. So the question in that exam was chief minister of Tamil Nadu. Uh, sorry, uh, president of India. The question was president of India. And there were four options. That one option was Jailalita. So 
I first, the moment so I was so happy because I know the name Jailalita, so I put a tick mark and said, she is the president of India. The person who corrected my question paper came searching me to the school and told my HM, such a useless student you have in a school, at 10 standard, she doesn't know who is the president of India. So you can understand, though it's a useless story, but this is how. It's a funny thing to laugh at today, but this is what is the reality of our children sometimes. We assume that they are getting 100 marks, but I am a very good student. I always get more than 90 percentage in all subjects. I have never got below 90 till my class. Day. So I have scored well, but basic things are not in my mind because I was never given that exposure even to read a book, even to get. So after that, I started personally to take a step, but I had got a good social science teacher at class 10, which changed my life. But this is how our school children are. So until and otherwise, we build that environment for our children, we cannot do it. So simple content like telling that Delhi is surrounded by the state, even many students no need to come to North. You can even tell the children, child from Telangana, if the child has to say, where is Puducherry? What are three important places in Puducherry? What languages they speak? Sometimes the children do not know. We don't know first about our own country, what is talking about globalization and about all the sustainable development goals. First, let's know about ourselves, right? So if my content is something, I'm taking an example of Delhi, but you can think in your own example. If I want to show to children understand Delhi is surrounded by this, simply a slide cannot help, right? I cannot simply put an image which I have drawn and show them. I need a complete political map to show them. For them to understand that Delhi borders are very clearly um, fixed, there is a border. There may be a small gap even that makes that this particular state is not connected with this particular place. So many times when the children mark Nepal and India, they have a problem. They think Nepal is part of India because that's drawn as part of India. Right? So there is a difference until and otherwise we show it visually on the child to see. But you cannot show a geographical map. You cannot see a temperature map. You should show only a political map to, for a child to understand the borders, right? So depending on the content, we need to choose the format of our digital content. The third uh, thing is I can just give an example again from the content itself. Like if you wanted to teach them, Delhi is the most populated country, uh, city in the country. Only showing images cannot help. Somebody coughing like this, that can be from any state, may not be from Delhi. Children will have a question. How, how it is proving that they are from only Delhi? So you should show Delhi behind one board and then take a picture. Or you should record really going and recording in Delhi, some video clips or some news clips where they are telling that today as per the news, this is what, there is a data available. The pollution level in each state, take a chart and compare and show. Compare all the states, Delhi stands high. So this is how we can build, when you're preparing a digital content, let's not think that I'm preparing a video. Eight person, one person has to speak. It's not that. Depending on our content, all the aspects has to change. The selection of format needs to change. We need to be very clear about what content we are teaching. So to conclude this, whenever we are going to really uh, prepare the digital content or integrate technology plan, only when you integrate, you will understand that, yes, I will identify the result. When you are doing this, the main simple point things to be kept in mind is there should be a purpose for developing your digital content. How will we establish this? When you prepare your lesson plan, you analyze your lesson content. You analyze your content and identify where I should prepare a chart, where I should prepare a model, where I should use myself, where I should explain through a story. This is how we have learned to write a lesson plan. Similarly, when you analyze the content, we need to find for this content, do I need a digital resource? If I need a digital resource, what type of resource? 
how do we decide the what type of resource we have uh, already learned this i understand i remember, uh, think that you would have seen this if i decide i need a digital content what type of content i want do i need to create an interactive do i need to create a simulation what i should create for example i have decided i need to create a video next question that has to come in which format of the video i need to create depending on my content should i give a talk should i do a glass screen recording should i do a docudrama which is the appropriate one for my content this needs to be decided after we decide we need to decide if i want to create this which software i will use to create this is the way we need to think about ict pedagogy integration so all starts with content until the content demands don't create a digital content when when you understood it is required for the content then you think maybe content don't demand but my learner are like this so i need it my context is like this so i need it we know very well our context are different we have people with network without network with a phone without phone with connectivity without connectivity so we have varied of people so whenever you prepare a digital content make it available in different formats you would have learned now interactive resource creation using h5p but until and otherwise a person has a thing like a person has a system or a mobile to play they cannot do it in that case you do it and make a recording of a video and also make it available at least a child who doesn't have anything can see so that is how we need to make various formats of digital content to enable ict pedagogy integration in different contexts so this is the first stage we need to analyze and understand do i need a digital content depending on my content context and my learner the second when you design it we need to decide which medium the very thing first thing is which type of content i'm going to create in that next which format i'm going to create third using which software i'm going to create after deciding all this a very important pedagogical aspect is what kind of content is my content for example you may create only a video let me take an example of a video itself okay so i'm taking a video i'm going to develop only a video but sometime that video may be helpful for whatever i taught in my class so you will say the teacher will teach this in the classroom but this video should be shared through whatsapp to the students so that they will learn and come to supplement what the teacher has taught the second way of preparing content is it is not a supplement the teacher is teaching teaching in the classroom but whatever the teacher is teaching to make it more clear i will create this content so for example i am using a presentation in my um now i am using a presentation am i using this presentation as a supplement or as a complement can you write in the chat box am i using it as a supplement or complement complement many have written complement and supplement okay so to just make it clear right, right now i am speaking right whatever whatever i am explaining here i wanted to make it clear maybe sometimes i am very fast so that you are not able to follow me sometimes my pronunciation is not correct some of you may not follow me so what i am trying to do is i am preparing a presentation to keep it as a visual thing even if you don't follow me see the visual and understand in that case whatever i am speaking here it is only complementing or it is supplementing it is only complement right when you see complement when you buy brew they will give a box to put that brew inside when you buy brew they will give a tumbler so that you use that brew make a coffee and drink that's what we call it as complement when we call it as supplement is when you have calcium less in your body then you add calcium tablet to supplement it 
it is not there so add this right so whenever we are preparing our digital content also there is two way of using it one is i as a teacher i can use it to complement what i am going to do it but like for example in mathematics you will have in your textbook only one line this was invented by ramanujam this was the theory was given by ramanujam only one line you are not expected to tell the history of lord ramanujam how he did he find in your maths class if you start telling you may lose one of your class right so what sometimes we do is we tell them go to this website read and come do we do that so it becomes a supplementary resource sometimes we can create digital content for such supplementary resources because that is where our teachers really struggle main things which is focused for exam they surely give it but additional thinking thought process to be enhanced there is no content what we are doing in the name of digital content whatever teacher has to explain we are creating that as a video and giving to a teacher so what are we telling teacher you don't stop stop you are talking and replace yourself with this video so then the technology will replace teachers now our intention is not that we should give a to a teacher when you are teaching when you are not able to explain it orally use this content to explain it better that could be a complementary resource you can also say in your syllabus there are these points which are very less content but it needs a lot of thing interesting facts are there behind these things can be given to a child right so those content can be prepared as a supplementary resource and give because we talk now flip learning blended learning mobile learning all are only in the paper we are not able to implement because no time within our 40 minutes class we need to take care of the children's uniform attendance food what not so how do we really children are also when they go back home their parents are not with them they are also going home for job and coming so children doesn't know what to do only thing they have is a technology with them in the form of smart tv in the form of mobile something is other given for the children to engage if we can make good supplementary content that could be a source of engagement when nobody is there at home so there is a need to create a lot of supplementary content not just explaining what is for exam give them interesting facts which they can do it by themselves at home which is beyond your textbooks which helps them to get the interest towards your subject so that is one of the thing which we can do i'll just give an example uh, for this which has made my life like turn to be like that i said that i have studied mathematics all of you can agree with me mostly we see maths people as dry people they are logically great calculation good but they will not have aesthetic sense that is what people conclude right but when i studied math i i had a good teachers in my bsc and msc that's what i give my credit to when i studied my master degree we were having a paper called fractal geometry so that is something a theoretical new paper in during my time it was introduced so there was a faculty who taught me what she what he did is he bought all of us a flute for whole class he gave us flute and there is one uh, song of kamal hasan which is a tamil movie song and it is in hindi and in all other language uh, that song goes like this kanne kalai mani it's a very old song so it's there in all the southern languages and in hindi also the movie is there so what he did is in our msc fractal geometry class he gave a flute and taught us how to play that song in the flute so we were wondering what kind of teacher he is is a higher education teacher wasting our time because to learn that song only one paragraph he taught us but to learn that it was more than a week we took then we were asking after one week he, we know that he is a music teacher also so we were thinking that he is doing some tricks to make us to become his music students that's what we thought initial after a week he said what he wrote all the notes for the song in the um, on the powerpoint like those days we had a, a slider this one a ohb projector 
in our school college we didn't have a, a, a this projector and all OHB projector so he wrote all the notes on the OHB sheet and brought it and projected and said now you observe the repetitions the uniformity which is repeated again and again in the song so he started teaching music to us we were still getting a good understanding surely we, he wants us to become his music student then the third step he said now let's relate this to fractal geometry. Fractal geometry is nothing but there is something which is happening uniformly again and again at a particular interval, which we cannot ensure. So this is the base of fractal geometry. This is how he introduced the subject. And in the next week, he took us all of us to one of the um, place in Madurai. It's a very small rock. When we see from outside, it looks like a small rock. He took just there and he said, okay, now you roam around. It's like a hot sunny day. He packed, told us to pack everything and come. And he said, he left us there. And he said, now roam around this rock and find some interesting thing if that is written on the uh, rock. So we roamed and found there are some, some new languages written on the rock. Some text was written. There was some kind of a space. Then he explained us this is all where earlier Buddhists have lived. We never know Madurai had Buddhists. We only know that Madurai is a very traditional place where Tamilians have lived and Tamil has grown. But we never know Buddhists have been living in Madurai. So he was telling that this is how they live. They put a rock. And we were explaining. We are studying MSc mathematics. Why are we having history class? But then he took the picture of whatever script was there, brought it to the class and explained where fractal geometry is applied in the scripts. This made me to get interested. And now wherever I go, first I go to the museum to learn about the place. So in a max class, it's never that max person can be so dumb. Only all the time you think calculation, but we can make a child more think by this those days there was no digital content so he didn't prepare it but he helped us to do all this by whatever was available but today we have technology now he is now retired he is staying with his children he is now 80 plus what he does now is now he knows technology so he is creating supplementary content like this and just sharing in facebook so when 83 plus can do all of us can do better Right. So this is one of the points which we need to keep in mind when we are creating that we need to create whenever we are integrating technology, we should ensure that we are using it for what purpose we also need to decide, we need to define this can be used in this way, this can be used in this way. the third way we talk about is integrated. Uh, integrated is like all of us have experience of using a, uh, like uh, what you can say. Um, mobile apps in your classroom, right? So sometimes like you, uh, this some, some of you have written Kahoot. Kahoot is kind of an integrated uh, resource. Why? Because Kahoot is a software. In that a Max teacher can put a Max content, English teacher can put an English content. There is a, uh, there is a technology and there is content that can come together, integrated together to really um, give make it as a resource. But when you don't like it, you can split it. You can remove the English content and replace it with social content. So when we see integrated, there is a technology, there is a content that can be put together at any time to create a collaboration or an engagement. But infusion is aware where technology and content are embedded. You cannot split it. I'll just give an example to understand these two. For example, if you mix sugar and pepper, then even after how much ever you mix, later you will be able to split the sugar and the pepper. That is a kind of integrated approach. But whenever say you infuse the approach, if you mix water in the lemon juice, you will understand the impact of water because the more you add water, the, the taste will change. If you less add water, this taste will change. But you cannot separate it as lemon juice again and water. There are other steps like you heat it up, evaporate water and all that some ways of segregation can be there, but the actual cannot be segregated. So for example, GeoGebra is one example of infused way of using technology. So what does research say is, the more you move to the last two part of using technology, the learning is more effective. 
So initially, if you now take a survey, most of us use technology only in these two ways. We don't move to this level. So let us slowly move. Maybe today you are only in this level. Don't worry about it. Try to move to the next level. Don't try to jump. Try to move just one level. These two are at same level. I can use supplement, complement, but if we are in this level, let's slowly try to move to the next level. So this is what is the way we need to improve ourselves when we design our plan. Today, if I use it as a complementary content, next day, let me think about a supplement. But one guiding principle that should be means of blend in many things. One, think about embedding competencies. You may teach English. You may give an interactive activity to learn alphabets. But when the children are clicking on it, children are incidentally learning how to use a mouse, how to use a keyboard. There are a blend of competencies. Sometimes when you give a collaborative work, there are human skills, soft skills, like how each person has to talk to each other, how to appreciate. So we need to think about those competencies when we are using technology. So resources also should be blended, not always technology. Give us physical resource, tell the children to read the book, come for discussion, then use a simulation. Resource persons also can be sent rather than one piece, person teaching all the time. Partner yourself with one of these. Now you are so many people are connected now. We should encourage participation of collaboration between yourself. Instead of you teaching, call one another English teacher to come and give one small talk in your class. Now no need to call. Just ask them to record a video and send it and just present it in your class. Or ask them to come live and do it. So the way you bring more resource, resource persons, also children uh, get more enriched. The different ways of learning happens. Try, let's, let's try to add like different methods in our teaching. This we have discussed, like we can use various methods which, which we learn from our BA also. And let's also have learning outcomes, not just for the content. What is our learning outcome in terms of behavioral change? These are some of the things we have learned very strongly in BA, but we forget. But we let us remind ourselves so that we will be able to prepare a best ICT integrated session plan, okay? And when you develop the content, I have already said this point, we need to blend it. We need to ensure physical thing is uh, also taken care. To do a best ICT pedagogy integration, we all need to enrich ourselves in this knowledge. All of you have pedagogy, all of you have content knowledge because you have done your degree in your subject. Already you know very thoroughly of your subject. All of you have done BA, so you know pedagogy knowledge. So you have learned in uh, BA how to integrate pedagogy with content that we have already learned. PC, we have learned pedagogy and content. For which content, which way of teaching. We have learned a lot. Now, we also learned educational psychology, how learners are, which level children learn how. And we also learn educational sociology, that in which context, what can be given, what not should be given. So all this knowledge we already have. We already learned this out, outer circle. You are all practicing this. But now the new intervention is technology. So we need to take strong steps to enrich ourselves with technology knowledge so that we will be able to start practicing all these parts. So to enrich yourself, now just attending five days SRG training is not sufficient. You make this is just a starting point. You'll get a starting point, but after this, how do you improve yourself daily to learn? You learned about interactive tool, but only one software they taught you, taught you. We are teaching only one software in this session. Can you only depend tomorrow Audacity is remote? What will you do? So how you can keep your updated? CIT is taking a continuous effort. Just go to CIT website. You can see there, there is resources. Sorry, uh, in, under events, there is a webinar. So when you click this, I'm just giving this link in the chat box. If you like, you can just copy and keep paste it and keep it with you somewhere. So you can see here, this is a daily activity which we do Monday to Friday. It's a live session from 4 to 5 p.m., which is happening through our YouTube channel. And you can watch in all these TV channels also. <coughs> Even if you're not able to watch live, whenever you are free, you can watch in the YouTube channel. So to help you out, so this is the this week's program is going on. So you can see already we have done 700 plus sessions.
and we ensure to make the video available here. So you don't need to search here and there. Just come here, click on this and go. So what different types of sessions you have? For example, I am a Max, I want to learn more about GeoGebra because there was only one session. So I'm just uh, searching GeoGebra. So you can actually, uh, since this is on a shared screen, it's not working. You can see GeoGebra itself we have taught for a week. How to use dynamic GeoGebra. You can also see how graspable, that's an another software which can be integrated with GeoGebra for better. How to use RoboCompass. These are all not taught you in this one. How can you use different tools? Social science, you would have learned one or two, but these are all social science tools. So now you have learned only one animation tool. These are all other animation tools. Different, different animations. You can learn on your own self. Whenever, whichever you like. You can take one, use it yourself, click on this video, learn and then do. One is you can learn from there. Another is if you are a person who knows the software which is not covered here, which you would like to share it, please mail to this mail ID stating that this, there is a mail ID given here. You mail with your details saying that this is software I know. I want to share about this in this program. So you can also become a resource person. So this is one way you can update yourself. So continuously we will be doing this. So recently what we are doing is Monday we share what every state is doing. Our national level what initiatives are happening. Tuesday and uh, Thursday, we also share about what ICT awardees have done, how they have used technology in their classroom, so that this will help us some ideas for you to take it up. On every Wednesday, there is a new tool introduced. And on every Friday, there will be a session on cyber safety. So this is all what we are giving to regularly update yourself. Please make use of this. And other places under the events, you will also have workshop and training. This is basically your five days online training, which is certified training. So right now there is a training going on how to create accessible digital resource. So when you come here, you can see the date you open the click on this, you'll get all the details. These are the five sessions. You had only one session on this during SRG. That was very less to give you just an overview. But if you now want to learn completely, register yourself. Now it's going on. You must have already missed all the sessions. Don't worry. Still, registration is always open. You can click, click. How long we keep it open is till we start the next train. So till that, you can just click on this. If you're watching live, you can watch. Otherwise, we have just put all the uh, sessions in YouTube um, uh, as a playlist. You can see all the four-day session is there. Fifth day also, it will come here. So simply, you come here, watch all the five-day session, come back. And you can see here at the end of fifth day, there will be a quiz which will be uh, open. So quiz will be open from November till December 23. So till December 23, you have time to complete this course. We will be adding the link here after today's session. So this way you can enable yourself to learn. The only thing is uh, this will be closed by December 23rd. But there are like this several sessions. If you want only for learning purpose, you can even see the completed sessions. We have done on virtual lab, how to um, create content, how to use artificial intelligence. There are several things, how to use ICT integration, very specifically game-based content, how do you create? So there are sessions like this, you can learn, but only you will not get certificate right now on this, okay? Uh, so current training is going on, you can join uh, in this. So this is one way you can keep yourself uh, updated to enrich this one. So coming to the last thing, when you implement whatever digital content you are doing, please try out in your classroom, do a small action research, try to understand whether it really helps the way you thought about it, share your experience. Sometimes you tried it, it didn't work, please tell others, don't try again and waste your time. One or two times you can try, but simply you know that it's a waste. You should not invest unnecessarily time. So this is a good way to do that. The last is evaluation. This is very, very important. When we really prepare digital content, we really don't do this. So we need to really do an evaluation of our content to check whether children like the content, some reactions, whether the teacher was able to use it. 
and whether this is really helping them to learn the way the content has to be learned. We assume that it will be learned, but sometimes it doesn't happen. We think that simulation are good, but we have done enough research from my side personally. I've done research where I have checked the simulation to be used for learning a starch test. But the children were not really able to learn the way they have to learn. Though simulation is good, virtual lab is good, but for learning the starch test, there was a need for a personal experience because there are many factors which children miss out if they learn through simulation. So we need to learn, check that. The third is behavior. There are many times because of our technology use, children have a negative behavior. So we need to be careful and keep watching what is the behavior coming up. After this COVID, many students don't want teachers. They don't like teachers' classroom. They are comfortable with online. So that's a, sub, that's a behavioral change that's a happen in us, which we need to change it back again. Every time human plays a very important vital role in our life, we cannot run away from it. So results is always something we check after using this content, whether children got good assessment score, we trust. But these are some of the aspects which we need to check it out. So the last point I want to say, whenever you are doing this, take care of the safety concerns. So whenever you are creating the... Um, uh, digital content, keep these points in mind. And when you use ICT tools, also keep this point in selection. It should be educational. It should encourage collaboration. Other ways, because of technology, people will start becoming isolated the way it happens in IT companies. We also need to support integration. We should not leave them saying that technology is everything. We also need to support play. Physical things has to be included. And don't leave child alone. Always have children with your control. Be a supporter. Avoid violence and stereotyping in any kind of content that you create. Involve parents. This is like very challenging thing, but let's also involve and let's support awareness of health, safety and health. So I'll stop here. Next few minutes, I can take up questions. If anyone any has any question. So here we will uh, con conclude this session. So I thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, just, uh, just give me one minute because I'm just running through the uh, chat box if there is any question which we have not addressed. Yes. There's one question, ma'am. Uh, yes. How did you make this presentation? Okay. Uh, this is a, a, a premium software, sorry, freemium software, which is called as Prezi, so which you can use it online. Prezi is a web pay, website where you can go and create a presentation to initially start. If you already made a PowerPoint presentation, just upload, then it will convert it like this then you can start learning yourself. If you want to learn how to use Prezi for creating presentation, you can see in our webinar page, there is a session on that. So which will help you to make some interactive presentation, right? What to say if we have one digital teacher, alternative for regular teacher for everything. Uh, Prasad, sir, uh, I'm not very cl uh, clear about your question. Can you explain? Like, what is the what is your is it a comment or a question? Andhra Pradesh, Prasad, or Reddy, sir? Okay. Uh, there is another question. By the time sir comes in, what does collaboration means? Only collaborating teacher or student collaboration means in all aspects, sir. We need to collaborate among teachers collaborate among students, collaborate among teacher and student in all ways. So because collaborating among teachers also gives a very good result um, because that helps us to really understand a better way. We cannot, uh, I, the way I understood the question of Prasadu sir, I'm just giving an answer. The thing is, yeah, Prasad sir, you have raised your hand. Uh, admin, have you given rights for him to open? 
Sir, Mentimeter, how you did an activity, even for that, we have one session in the webinar. You have to create this activity and then the link works. It's easy. Uh, please unmute, Mr. Press. Are you ready? Please. Sir, you may unmute and speak. Yes, yeah, sir, yeah. you can. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, till now we are talking about the digital tools to, to supplement, ah, complement, or infuse, ah, isn't it? Uh, yes, but sir. I think uh, uh, we need one digital teacher to teach every content or everything in the textbook or syllabus or our curriculum hmm. uh, for the remote uh, students. Hmm. The, the, this is my idea or okay. uh, what I uh, found for uh, remote students. Yes, sir. Actually, the thing is even... Uh, thank you, sir. Actually, that's a good observation. Okay. One thing is there are a lot of teachers who are acting as a digital teachers for the schools where teachers are not there. I can just tell about one of the ICT awardee who is sitting in a remote place in between the hills in the uh, in the place of Uti, where he sits in a pre in a primary school. Uh, Prasad, sir, if you can mute yourself now because the children's um, yeah. So uh, the thing is the teacher is in placed in a primary school, but he is an MSc candidate who can even teach at PGT level, but he has got his appointment in primary school. But he found that around Coimbatore, uh, there is no uh, proper physics teachers in many schools. So he sits in the school and then teaches the students of other primary sc uh, schools. So you're right that there can, a teacher can play a role of physical teacher as well as a digital teacher. But in the context like India, we cannot have additional digital teachers separately. And as per the budget announcement, every teacher in the country is supposed to become a digital teacher and uh, uh, NCRT is taking all the efforts for that to slowly move ahead and SRGs as you are all the team going to support in the implementation in future. Thank you. Sir. Sir, sorry, ma'am. Yes, sir. Hello. I have an idea. Ha, sir. So we, uh, by using digital uh, Diksha platform, huh. We can prepare uh, all the tools or all the uh, needed material as a course for primary students or secondary students as a digital teacher. No need to other budget. I Sir, I'm not sure whether you are aware of it. We have 12 channels which is running in the country. I think whether this has been told to you or not, I'm not knowing, but I'm just updating. There are 12 TV channels where class-wise it is happening, the digital learning is happening. And all the content are already available in Diksha. In this, in English and Hindi, we are preparing at NCRT level. But it is very important to have it in regional languages for all the states. So already the budget has been sanctioned for 200 TV channels, which will become a digital teacher. Actually, all of you are being trained for that only. You are, all your states are some like Andhra Pradesh, you have already a TV channel. But there are some states who don't have a TV channel class wise, right? They have one TV channel and you are not able to really address. So there is already a budget announced. Already all the states have been trained at various levels. Uh, even now the training has been given how to set up studio. So when the government of your own state sets up everything, there should be somebody to become a digital teacher and record the video. That is why we are doing this SRG training. You all have to become that part of trainer. The persons who develop the content which will be acting as a digital teacher. That will surely happen, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank nice you, sir. Good yeah. morning, Angel, ma'am. And Julia yes, from sir. Ladakh. Yes, sir, ma'am. <laughs> How are you, ma'am? Good, good, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, ma'am. Uh, once again, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, here, uh, I would like to share a small uh, thing uh, and a big contribution from you, ma'am, that uh, I'm happy to share you that uh, on 20th, I have a session with HOIs of Lay, uh, in which I'm going to present a presentation which you taught me that I had prepared a presentation on Prezi. Okay, <laughs> very good. So there is a okay. question from somebody why CIT is using Windows and Prezi. Very true, sir. We don't use Windows, we use Linux. 
I'm uh, I'm actually using now uh, um, Windows because there are certain sessions we have to take for other things to show also, which doesn't work in Linux for them. All the teachers have not shifted to Linux, but in our trainings, when you come here physically, in our labs, you, you will find only Ubuntu software. We don't even uh, have uh, Windows software. And using Prezi for the presentation, I'm not using a preparatory software. So again, I would like to make everyone clear, I don't use a proprietary software. I'm using a software which is a freemium. There is two category, which is premium, freemium, and open source. When you say premium, you have to buy, right? You have to purchase, you have to do. Freemium is something which allows you to use for certain purposes. Prezi is a software which allows you to use for free presentations for making your own presentations. And I have registered myself as a teacher as in all this, as a trainer in all this, so that I get the flexibility of, because these softwares also have their CSR. Whoever is a owner of these companies, they also have CSR. So what they, most of the companies do is, for educational purpose, they make it free to some extent. Pressy allows you to do presentation, but it doesn't allow you to download the presentation without purchase. It doesn't allow you to create a video and content download. I cannot create content as a video content, but if I create, I cannot download and share it. That is true, but this is only to show there is a software called Sozi, but the thing is Sozi needs similar to Prezi, which is an open source. I can create the software content, but the, the problem is when I show it, everyone have to learn slowly. Everyone cannot jump in the thing. So we are showing different tools. When you start the work, maybe you are not so technical because Sozi is little technical. So you start with Prezi, try to understand everything, slowly shift to Sozi. So that's how we try and say. So we don't use proprietary. Anwar, uh, uh, yeah. good morning, sir. Yes. I think you have an great presentation uh, and i just want to a question ma'am and we have been using technology for years uh, for teaching the students different uh, learning ability students but even though we have been using and sharing such links to the presence although and we have some sort of children who are uh, i think uh, sir i don't say that word that the, their learning is slow that uh, so slow learners we thought love that so regarding that concern, how a teacher should think uh, to enhance their learning skills regarding the ICT. So because of, even though we have using different tools and interactive content and presentation videos, but still uh, some short of students were lying in, in the gap of uh, uh, not achieving such standards. So. Sir, I will, I will only give my uh, personal opinion on this. See, we are trying to bring every child to a level. But unfortunately, God has not created everyone like that, right? There are children who are performing slow in our classroom, but they may be good at something else. There is no human being who is not good at anything. They may be good at something who doesn't like to study at all. There are people whom you really, uh, like you, you have to open your eyes and see how can a be person be like this who is not at all interested in study? There are many people like that. So only thing is like we need to see whether we can help them to get the basic things that they can walk out. And uh, I think in future, NEP talks about all this saying that children have varied interests, so there is need to be a flexibility. How a child who doesn't like to study our subjects, how can they take a vocational area and move ahead? So let's wait for the new curriculum framework. Some, uh, some solution comes for us, you are safe. Yes, thank, okay. you. <laughs> thank you. I think it's getting the late for the next session also. So I'll stop here because the organizers must be also tensed. Um, so what I will do is like, if you have any question, I know that you are all in the group. You can keep posting your questions in that. Uh, so we will be able to answer you. And I could see some uh, like a personal message. I could see somebody that, uh, who has studied along with us in my college is also attending. Nice to hear that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Halesh. So let me just cut, get in touch with you later. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank to you everyone. very much, ma'am. It's a really wonderful session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Ms. you Pink. so much, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Ms. Pinky. For such an Thank informative you, session. Thank you. And uh, uh, we will take here 10 minutes break.